Hi, I'm Carol, the module convener, and welcome to the first pre recorded video of blockchains and crypto assets. This is just a short introduction to what you'll be learning throughout the term. So, there are two parts uh, blockchains and crypto assets, although they're inextricably intertwined, <laughs> you can't have one without the other. Um, so a blockchain is um, a, a, a database of digitally stored and cryptographically linked information. Multiple copies of the blockchain is held on what we call nodes of a peer-to-peer -peer network. So on the right here, you can see the nodes in the Bitcoin network. Um, they are distributed all over the world. And if one of the nodes goes down, you still have many other nodes retaining a copy of the blockchain. So this is a live map. It's a rainy Sunday afternoon in the UK, but nevertheless, some of the nodes on the west coast of um, uh, America. This is one of the most active areas, San Francisco and Los Angeles, but also there are a lot of nodes in the um, Europe and, and London. Um, there used to be many, many more nodes in London relaying transactions over the network, but um, the uh, one of the most active of them is uh, BitMEX. It's obviously clearly translated its operations, its research operations. Let me see if I can find, here we have this BitMEX research to New York. Um, banks in the US can now be custodians of crypto assets. That may, may have something to do with it. Previously, it was in London that had less draconian rules about trading on crypto assets. There are some obviously in, um, uh, in, in the uh, center of Europe and so forth. So you can see these are um, routes for transactions. Um, now transactions are not just um, uh, value transfers, but they also include things like smart contracts, which allow um, decentralized finance applications to be built. But um, it's very difficult that, to do it on a basic blockchain like Bitcoin because it uses what we call mining, which is a very old fashioned, laborious consensus um, algorithm, which requires a lot of electricity. And um, this is um, um, also a live map of um, the nodes in the Bitcoin network. And um, you can see by the amount of energy, um, the different colors. So there, these, these tall spikes of red are actually what we call mining farms. Um, there are mining farms generally built in places like Iceland, so they don't use up too much expensive electricity. But since then, the farms are now grouped into large conglomerates and the uh, distribution and um, trust is something that may become an issue in an old fashioned blockchain such as uh, Bitcoin. The Ethereum blockchain is something um, completely different though. And um, it's much more complex. This is where all the DeFi craze is now being launched. Um, so it takes quite a long time to understand this dashboard here. When I first saw it a couple of years ago, I was thinking, what on earth is gas? <laughs> and it did take quite a long time to understand. Um, but you'll learn all about this in one of the topics and also in smart contracts. And these allow thousands of what we call crypto assets, coins and tokens to be launched um, that now um, they, uh, the Internet of Things um, and other decentralized finance applications are growing um, uh, every year. The, the, the new Web 3.0 is well underway. So that's just a gentle introduction to the topic. And in the first lecture, have a look at the lecture notes now. Um, uh, 
this is the um, background. We're going to look at crypto assets in this video. Um, then I don't want to make the videos too long. So the next one will be all about exactly what a blockchain is. And then finally, we'll look at Bitcoin um, in a little bit of detail, but there'll be a whole topic on Bitcoin in topic three. So what is a crypto asset? Well, crypto assets are one type of digital asset. So what's a digital asset? Digital assets are anything that can be stored as binary data. Um, I'll tell you in a minute what that binary data is. A um, little bit more about digital assets. Um, well, they have economic value, just like tangible assets, assets you can feel um, that have a physical presence or intangible assets. These are things like goodwill or um, patents that don't necessarily have a, a physical presence, but they have economic value. Um, and many digital assets are simply information about real assets. For example, there may, an online shop front is a, a digital asset which contains information about my company. Um, and the, the trouble, unfortunately, is that once it, digital assets are on the internet um, in this form, who owns the information? For example, um, Facebook um, had a lot of data taken by Cambridge Analytica um, during the Brexit um, referendum and also the US election. Um, so there are real problems about security and ownership with the current Web 2.0. Um, and then competition, of course, Amazon, <laughs> Jeff Bezos owns, earns um, 200 million plus a day and owns 13 billion, I mean, more than most uh, governments. <laughs> so, um, and they can advertise competitors. You know, if I have a garden shed company and a customer looks for a garden shed, then they're going to be swamped with all different possibilities for garden sheds. Um, and Amazon are only going to act to uh, maximize their own profit. So if they get a lot of sponsorship from a really bad manufacturer, they'll still take that. So there are a lot of, of trust and competition and ownership problems that um, are created by the current form of the web. Um, but storing information cryptographically on blockchains can resolve many of these key issues. So I said, before, what is binary data? Let's understand exactly what binary is. Um, well, any number can be converted into binary format. Binary numbers are just loads of zeros and ones, okay? Um, here's a couple of examples. Let me show you um, another example um, on my uh, webcam here. Uh, what about 42 as a number? The answer to the universe. <laughs> okay, to, um, to make, convert it into binary, um, I uh, start from the right actually and I go binary has just base two, it could be tertiary with base three, so two to the zero, two to the one, two squared, two cubed, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, I uh, probably don't have to go any more than that. I mean, two to the zero, anything to the zero is one. Um, two to the one is two. Two squared is four. Two cubed is um, eight. Two to the four is 16. And two to the fifth is 32. If I went to two to the six, I'd get to 64. But that's, that's above 42. And so I only have to get up to 32. So 42 is 32 leaving over 10, which is 8 plus 2. So I put zeros there. Okay. So I can write 42 equals, um, going from here, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then 0, 1, 0, 0, and then all the rest is 0. So you should write it backwards like that. And um, we store them in... Um, uh, bits of eight actually. Eight bits is one byte, okay? And one bit is in a zero or a one. 
So you all be familiar with what a megabyte is, but you never maybe understood exactly what a megabyte is. So uh, a megabyte is a load of um, zeros and zero, zeros and ones that um, have uh, 10 to the six, that's a million blocks of eight. Now you can also convert um, uh, decimals to binary, for example, uh, 42.17453 or whatever it is. Okay, it can, has a decimal point in binary as well. Uh, you can also convert letters. Uh, there we are. And even an exclamation mark has a code of its own as well. This is called ASCII code. Um, so that converts letters to binary, um, but also pictures by the pixels and the positions can be converted to, um, to binary. So this is American standard code for information interchange. There's a Chinese one as well, and every um, language with um, different alphabet has a different type of code. So information is um, a key form of digital asset, um, but software, that's obviously computer code is, is, is stored as zeros and ones, um, has always been. Um, designs, you know, graphically, anything graphic can be stored binary. Um, and anything that's written, like patents and trade secrets, can be stored in digital format. Art, obviously movies, uh, you know, otherwise you wouldn't be able to have a movie on your computer if it wasn't stored um, in binary format. Um, uh, virtual property, you know, like uh, you win a sword in your, in your computer game, that's, uh, that's a digital asset that actually has economic value that you can trade within the game. And of course, the top subject of this module, uh, crypto assets. Uh, so these are coins and tokens. We'll explain what the difference is in a minute. Coins and tokens for the exchange of value um, or utility services, like money, um, asset shares, parts of a company, other securitizations, and, and even financial derivatives, swaps and futures and options are crypto assets now. So a little bit more about examples of crypto assets. A cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is just one type of crypto asset. It's only used to transfer value. Um, now a cryptocurrency usually resides on its own blockchain. That means it's a coin, not a token. Uh, examples include Ripple. This is um, a, a means of um, cross-border payments. And here I've taken you to cointelegraph.com, which uh, is a very useful source. Um, lots of terms explained, um, news articles, magazine and so forth. So you should watch, um, let's have a look at Ripple News at the moment, what's been happening recently. Um, I'm particularly interested because I happen to hold some Ripple uh, but uh, it's not the most profitable um, of the investments. It's more a long-term view on what's going to happen to the dollar for me. Uh, Litecoin is also, oops, here we are, going too far. Uh, Litecoin is another crypto um, currency, but other crypto assets have wider use than just the value transfer. Um, utility coins and tokens, uh, Ether is, the, is, that's the name of the crypto asset. Ethereum is the blockchain, okay? We're gonna really study that in detail. Another interesting one is um, BAT, basic attention token. And I've taken you here to Hackanoon, who's a, a blogger um, who has quite often some of the most um, uh, far-reaching um, articles about things that are about to happen. And uh, although basic attention token is still not mainstream, 
it's something that um, you use within the Brave browser. If you use the Brave browser, uh, you pay per view. So if you're looking at media online, then the, the person, like the artist who created the, the music or, or made the video um, actually gets paid for it instead of Amazon taking all the profit. So that's a nice idea, I think. Oh, keep going back to here. Um, just to finish this um, video. Um, yeah, security tokens, they're uh, asset backed, they're like bonds or, or equity um, and stable coins. Uh, these are usually tokens. And there's one particular one which we're going to focus on called Tether. These are supposed to be like one for one with the dollar or it could be linked to the Swiss franc or any other fiat currency. Um, Tether is a real problem. Um, uh, Ethereum is getting clogged. There's too many um, people trying to use the, the blockchain now. And so it takes quite a long time to get smart contracts fulfilled because there aren't enough validators and the fees are getting really high. So Tether is it's a token. It hasn't got its own blockchain. So it's now moved to OMG Network, which is the eighth blockchain it's issuing um, new tokens on. And finally, central bank digital currencies. These are instruments for money, monetary policy. Um, China is already rolling out uh, a CBDC for the renminbi. Um, and the aim is to replace cash completely and also to facilitate cross-border transactions without having to use the US dollar. So that's it for this video. See you again soon.